Hello everyone, my name is Kira Eastall and I was a Claw Fellow back in 2004-05. For most of my career I worked in the library sector and for over 10 years I led the library service in Devon through a huge amount of change caused by local authority funding reductions. I now work independently as a coach and consultant focusing on change management, organisational design and leadership development. Many of you will now be facing a time of having to make huge changes in the way your organisations operate and run and for some of you you'll be responsible for leading those changes. Redundancies, restructures, closures of whole organisations or buildings will sadly be on the cards for many organisations, large and small, across the cultural sector. I wanted to share with you five lessons that I learned during my time in Devon, a time when we had to reduce our budget by over 50%. And now I should say at the outset that I am not an HR professional and I would always advise that you get the best possible HR advice you can, whether you're a small or a large organisation and ideally have access to an employment lawyer so that you can check that anything you're proposing is within the law. So, tip number one. Do everything you can to reflect your organisation's ethos and values in the way you approach the changes that you're going to make. Your staff members may react in many different ways to the changes that you're proposing. Shock, sadness, anger but they will ultimately appreciate the way that you went about those changes. Take the time to talk through those changes, make yourself available for questions, be as honest as you possibly can. You may not get everything right, so be prepared if, to admit it if you made a mistake. Tip number two, be prepared to flex and adapt your proposals in the light of any suggestions made by your team members. You'll have prepared your proposals for changes with all the information you have available to you, anticipated income, anticipated audience figures. Share as much information as you possibly can with your team so they can see how you've reached the conclusions that you have. Seek their ideas and their input on proposals before you make any final decisions. You may find ways of making the budget reductions or part of the budget reductions that you hadn't anticipated. Tip number three, take the time to get the communication about proposed changes absolutely crystal clear. It really pays to take the time to draft emails, letters and other documents very clearly, setting out timescales that you're confident you can keep to. If you're in any doubt, give yourself some leeway time-wise so you can flex and adapt as new information or new circumstances arise. Consider drafting a frequently asked questions document, setting out a clear response on the questions you expect to be asked. You can keep it updated regularly and make sure that you share any draft communications with your senior team and with your trustees if appropriate, just to make sure that everyone is briefed and that they themselves can answer any queries they receive with the correct information. Think about setting up a specific email address so that any queries coming in from tech team members can be answered by other members of your senior team. Tip number four, involve your trade unions if you have them. It's a stressful time for everyone and trade unions will understandably be fighting hard for their members. But as far as you can, it pays to be open and transparent as you can be with them and invite their ideas and suggestions. You almost always get a better outcome if you can build a constructive and effective dialogue with your trade union representatives. And my final tip is to look after yourself. It can be really tough to be the person leading the change or to be part of the senior team leading the changes. You're likely to make it, be making changes that you yourself find difficult and unpalatable. And you'll be doing that with colleagues that you care about and that you've worked alongside for some time. Make sure to acknowledge the impact it's having on you personally and build support in wherever you can. Reach out to one or two friends or colleagues or claw friends that you absolutely trust to get the support that you need. Eat well, moderate your alcohol, alcohol intake and take care to get as much sleep as you possibly can. Reach out for help if you need it. 
So my top tips again, reflect your organisation's ethos and values in the way you approach any proposals. Be prepared to adapt and flex in the light of any new information or suggestions coming from your team. Take time to get the, inf the communication right. Involve your trade unions. Look after yourself. I hope these tips are useful to you as you navigate these difficult times ahead. And I wish you all the very best in the weeks and months ahead.